Hey everyone, Caffeine Man here, and today we are going over the half-life of caffeine. <laughs> what exactly is that? It's exactly how it sounds. How long does the caffeine stay in your system? Or, or, or at least half of it. Coming right up. Hello again, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. And if you want to stay informed on all things caffeine related, as well as informative caffeine videos, feel free to hit the subscribe button. I post new videos every Tuesday night and most of the time, a bonus video on the weekends. And in today's video, we're going over the half-life of caffeine. I'll go over some of the information in general and then break down some of the science into more understandable terms. I, 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 I hope so at least. It's complicated stuff. My brain's only so big. Additionally, in this video, I will be answering the question of how long does the energy last in energy drinks, as well as how much caffeine I tend to have on a regular basis. Timestamps and chapters listed below. So, how exactly did this video come up? Well, as you guys know, I like to sneak in a little caffeine safety, a little informative caffeine video every now and again. But this one, it's actually been on my to-do list for quite a while. And as of recently, I've actually had a rise in questions related to this topic, which encourages me to do the video even more. That <laughs> way I don't have to answer those questions anymore. So, one of the most common questions that I get, or suggestions, or, or demands, depending on how you read the comment and what tone of voice, is, hey, Caffeine Man, why don't you go over how long the energy lasts for? Jeez. Or, hey, Caffeine Man, can you please inform us how long the energy lasts when you have an energy drink? Thank you so much for your time. And up until this point, I've actually answered that question numerous times in my comment section. Therefore, I wanted to get a video so that everyone can get the answer if it's something that's been on their mind. And I will discuss that topic right after I go over the half-life of caffeine. But because they kind of go hand in hand. You'll see once I start explaining it. As a general rule of thumb, the average half-life of caffeine is about five hours. What exactly does that mean though? It means that if you have a standard energy drink at 10 milligrams per ounce, which is 160 milligrams for a 16 ounce can, that five hours later, you're still gonna have 80 milligrams of caffeine in your system. Half-life of caffeine. Video over. What, we good? No? Okay. But that five hour number is really just an average and it's an extreme average because there are so many different things that can affect that number. Due to lots of other factors, even though the average half-life of caffeine is five hours, it can range anywhere from one and a half hours to nine and a half hours, which is a huge, huge range. Wow. So not everyone is exactly five hours. The range is huge. Let's find out why. So what are some of the things that can affect the half-life of caffeine? Well, a lot of people like to say that your age has something to do with it, as well as your weight and several other factors. But ultimately, what it comes down to is it mostly comes down to your metabolism. As you get older, your metabolism tends to slow down. And depending on how much you weigh, could also be partially related to your metabolism being faster or slower. So overall, it's how your body metabolizes caffeine. And the truth is, some people can have an energy drink or, or a coffee at eight o'clock at night and be able to go to bed at 11 o'clock and sleep without a problem. Other people can have a coffee at noon and not be able to get to sleep at midnight because they're sensitive to caffeine. And there's a decent amount of people that are sensitive to caffeine, but why are some people sensitive to caffeine while others aren't? I'm about to tell you one of the reasons why. Caffeine is metabolized in the body by an enzyme called cytochrome P450-1A2 or shortened CYP1A2. Everyone has two copies of a gene by the same name, and there are two variations of this gene which can affect how quickly someone metabolizes caffeine. The CYP1A2, asterisk 1A, makes an enzyme that metabolizes caffeine very rapidly. However, CYP1A2, asterisk 1F, ooh, that one metabolizes caffeine more slowly. But most people have one of each of these genes, Therefore, they balance each other out for that average five hour half-life of caffeine. But if you have two of the genes that are fast, you're gonna process that caffeine a lot faster. But if you have two of the genes that are slow, you're gonna be very sensitive to caffeine. There you go. Another category of people that may process caffeine differently are those that work out compared to the people that don't work out. People that work out could process caffeine faster because they have a faster metabolism. Not to say that everyone who works out has a faster metabolism. It's just that when they do work out, their metabolism speeds up. So if they're gonna have caffeine while they're working out, like a pre-workout drink, they are gonna metabolize that faster than someone who's not working out because their metabolism's not going as fast. It's all about metabolism. People who smoke tend to have a shorter half-life of caffeine. Can anyone guess why? Huh, anyone? Who's been paying attention in class? 
I said, who's been paying attention? I see you back there. I wasn't sleeping uh, because because smoking smoking speeds up the metabolism. That's right, very good. There are also some medications that can affect the half-life of caffeine. One of them is women who are on birth control. Research has shown that these pills can slow down the metabolization of caffeine. And if there are any medications that also slow the metabolism, those are also gonna slow the half-life of caffeine. Neurological issues. Now, although I am focusing heavily on the metabolism, it's good to point out that even though the caffeine is metabolized by the body at different rates, caffeine affects the brain receptors. Therefore, anyone with specific neurological conditions may also react to caffeine differently based on how their brain reacts to the stimuli. But how long do these energy drinks last for? People always ask me this question. They wanna know what's the best energy drink to give me the most amount of energy. They say, come on caffeine man, you seem to know what you're talking about. Give us the scoop on which one's the best. You should be able to tell us. Well, here goes. The effects of caffeine usually reach its peak within 30 to 60 minutes of consumption. Around this time is when you'll usually experience the jittery effects of caffeine or the most potent amount of energy. And it's usually why people use pre-workout drinks about 30 minutes before working out. Now, based on the half-life of caffeine being five hours, it's probably one of the reasons why five-hour energy will never get sued for not giving you enough energy. There are plenty of people that say, those five-hour energies didn't work. They lasted like an hour. I'm going to sue them. The problem is, even though you may not have felt the energy for five hours, you think you only felt it for like an hour, the science is going to back up five-hour energy. And science says that the half-life of caffeine is five hours, so you're still going to have it in your system. Could they have named it 10 hour energy? That, that would be cutting it close because you know, even though the half-life is five hours, you think it might last 10 hours. It's not always the case based on all those reasons, different people, different metabolisms. So, so five is a nice safe number for them. Therefore, when people ask me how long the caffeine lasts, how long does the energy last for this energy drink that you're reviewing in each and every review, Caffeine Man, is this the best one for energy? The answer is always the same. It varies. It's based on how your body metabolizes caffeine. It's also based on how your body reacts to the ingredients in these energy drinks because different energy drinks have different ingredients that can affect the metabolism in different ways. It's also about how your brain receptors react to the stimuli of caffeine. Everyone's gonna be different. Doesn't matter which energy drink you have. Therefore, some people can drink a bang and be hyper all day long, whereas other people will drink a bang and be fine within an hour or two. There isn't gonna be one specific energy drink that works the same for everybody. Some people argue that rain gives people more energy because it has natural caffeine, therefore the caffeine takes longer to process and it lasts longer. Whereas other people will argue that bang gives them more energy because they process the caffeine faster and they get a faster boost of energy. Therefore it's gonna be different for everybody. And even though bang and rain have 300 milligrams of caffeine, there are still other drinks that actually have more than those drinks as well. Some of them have 350, some of them have 400. Some of them have those numbers in 12 ounce cans or eight ounce shots. And when you have those kind of high dosages, you could develop a caffeine tolerance. This is yet another example of something that could affect the half-life of caffeine if you begin to develop a caffeine tolerance. Let's talk a little bit about caffeine tolerance since it affects the half-life of caffeine. I'm gonna use myself as an example and go over how much caffeine I typically consume. And 300 milligrams is just way, way, way too much for one drink. I actually prefer the standard energy drink amount, which is usually 10 milligrams per ounce, because I like to have my caffeine throughout the day. I'm a big fan of tea, so I usually have a hot tea or two in the day. Even in the summertime, I'll at least have one cup of tea. In the wintertime, I might have two cups of tea, and I'll even have some caffeinated hot chocolate. How do you make that? I mentioned it in several videos, but I'll mention it in this one too. You make a hot chocolate and you drop in some extra caffeinated chocolate, makes it a little extra creamy, definitely makes it more caffeinated. I also drink lots of water throughout the day, and then I usually have one to two different energy drinks. If I end up having a 300 milligram energy drink in the day, that doesn't give me much wiggle room, especially if I'm having one to two cups of tea at 80 milligrams total, that's bringing me close to the 400 mark or over. So I absolutely love, love, love drinks like Amino Energy, which has 100 milligrams, Red Bull, which has 80 milligrams or 114 milligrams, depending on the can, Blake Star, which is 140 milligrams, which is slightly higher than the standard amount, but still not too, too high. This way, I have a lower amount of caffeine going through my system all day long. And if I need a bigger punch of energy, then I can step up to a 200 or 300 milligram energy drink. Now, if you have high amounts of caffeine every day on a regular basis, you may begin to develop a tolerance for it. When you develop a tolerance of caffeine, the effects of caffeine begin to get minimalized and you feel like you need to have more caffeine to have more energy. 
More caffeine could lead to an addiction, and numerous health issues can come along with that addiction to caffeine, such as sleep deprivation, impaired judgment, emotional fatigue, mood swings, depression and anxiety, and that's just to name a few. And even at lower doses of 400 and a little bit under that, you could still develop a caffeine tolerance. And I mean, just think about it for a second. If you have 300 milligrams of caffeine every single day, your body's just gonna get used to it, it's gonna adapt to it, and it's gonna begin to be tolerant to it. Our bodies adapt, it's just what they do, which is why I prefer to cycle my caffeine as to never develop a tolerance to it. I average between 200 and 600 milligrams per day hovering around that 300 to 400 mark. And if I ever have a day where I'm at 600, I definitely back it up to 200 to 250 the next day in order to balance it out and not develop a tolerance to it. So by cycling your caffeine, your body doesn't know what's coming next. Your body's gonna be like, oh, am I getting 200 milligrams today? I'm, I'm used to 200. And then bam, you hit it with 600. And then it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. With 600, that's a kind of a lot. I, I'm, I'm ready for it though. Are you gonna give me 600 today? And you're like, what, what? You're only giving me 200. How am I going to work on 200? I'll, I'll get used to the 200. Then the next day it's 300. Next day it's 400. Drop it back down to 200. Left, right. Body doesn't know what's coming at you. You keep it out of that tolerance level. Doesn't know what's coming. You're cycling your caffeine. Never become tolerant to it. Cycling caffeine on a regular basis is my best recommendation to anyone that uses caffeine on a regular basis. It is the most effective way to use caffeine for your everyday consumer. But everyone uses it differently. If you're someone who works out, then you have a completely different reason for using your caffeine and you might take 300 or 400 to work out and then drop it down the next day. Basically, everyone's gonna be different. Everyone has different reasons for using caffeine. So use the caffeine the best way that works for you, but I recommend cycling if you use it on a regular basis for everyday use. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little bit more about caffeine. And you can stop asking me in the comments how long the energy lasts for, because I'm gonna point you back to this video. Thank you so much for joining me. Next week is my two year anniversary on YouTube. I'm very excited. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate the support. And I have a couple of videos planned out similar to what I did last year. So I hope you can join me for those videos. Till next time, have yourselves a great day. Or night. I see you back there. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> now I have to try not to laugh. <laughs>